Marcy Garno, great to have you aboard on the Big H Podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me, Mike. I, this is really cool that you're doing this. I appreciate well, the invite. Well, good. And I'm glad, uh, you know, I, I live across, of course, the street from uh, your father, Seb. And I, I think I went with you first and I may get him down the line, but. You're a brave man. <laughs> I am a brave man. And, and you know what it's like to live with him. And of course, you know, we live across from him, but yeah. great guy, great guy. He's uh, a good man. Got many things to go through tonight, and it's your podcast, and we have all the time in the world. I'd uh, love to hear from you and stories and, and get your thoughts on things. Uh, okay. To start off, it, I just want to ask you first question. What's a day in the life of Marcy, your maiden name for it, Garno, mm -hmm. uh, these days? Well, um, I have a little further commute. We did move to the city about five years ago, so um, I'm up up early we have a dog now so um you know it's it's walks with the dog and uh prepping for the work day um i start my work day at the high school at eight o'clock uh, and a little bit after staff and students arrive um so i have my 25 minute commute with my coffee which is my most favorite time of the day now because i come in an hour later um typically you know there's already people standing at my desk. And so it gives me an opportunity to unwind a little bit. Um, you know, but that's my work day. And then it's, you know, crazy day every day. People, you know, say, oh, it must be quiet now. You know, you're on break or summertime. It must be quiet. It's, you know, literally maybe two weeks out of the, the 12 months. It's, a, you know, I play catch up. I purge. I, you know, file, catch up on that kind of stuff. But it's a it's a busy busy office. Weekends are chill. You know, usually it's a, because we're downtown now, one night might be, a, you know, out to see a live show somewhere, or dinner. So I enjoy my weekends. What type of dog do you have? What's the name? She's a golden doodle. And she's actually a rescue um, with the rescue, the um, North Paw Rescue, which is one of the um, groups that Cooper Streb is working with. Um, rescuing the puppies from the puppy mills. In fact, she was from a mill. Um, so we've had her about a year and a half now, and she's she's a big dog in the 937 square feet that we're in, but she's awesome. We love her. And explain a little bit about um, your commute. What type of music? You listen to music, podcasts? What do you do? Yeah, Just we, um, and... you know, I Bill has music going all the time. I mean, when we're home, he's got it going now. Um, we listen to all kinds of music, jazz, soul, you know, R&B, uh, classic rock, Southern rock, folk music. Really about the only things that we don't listen to are heavy metal and we're not really big country fans, traditional country, I guess, fans. So. For our viewers that don't know, you're class of 1984 from the village of Hilton. Yeah. Um, what's the last concert you guys went to? You said you sometimes go to shows downtown or whatever. Uh, we went to the last live show we went to was on St. Patrick's Day. One of our favorite places to go to down here is um, a place called Abilene. And um, there was a, a Irish band there. We go there a lot. They They bring in really good musicians for such a small venue. The owner is pretty well known here in the Rochester area. So, um, but yeah, that was the the last live music we saw just in a small little venue. Prior to that, I think we were at the new um, the new venue there in the old Xerox building where they mm -hmm. turned the theater and I can't remember who it was, but yeah, we see a lot of shows. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go back in time. Yep. Uh, let's go back to uh, your birthplace, a little information about your parents, mm -hmm. even grandparents, and any siblings. I know yeah. you got. So um, I was born in Rochester at, at Rochester General, um, raised here in Hilton um, by my, my parents, Terry and, and Seb Burrett. Um, had a great childhood. You know, my my both my parents' families, um, you know, extended families, cousins, siblings um, were great. I mean, it was, you know, on the Burrett side, it was 
lots of fun, you know, family Christmases and picnics and reunions. Um, my dad um, has um, three brothers and a sister. His oldest brother has passed. Um, so in all of their kids, all of the cousins, and then my mom had uh, two, my mom passed away three years ago, um, but she has two sisters and a brother. Her brother also had passed, but, you know, again, lots of love, lots of support. Um, my parents divorced when um, I was in middle school and dad remarried uh, my stepmom, Kathy. And, um, you know, I have my sister, Shelly and um, Kevin and Sarah, my, my other two younger siblings. So Shelly is in Connecticut. Uh, she met her um, husband at Purdue University, go Boilermakers. Um, and they uh, have since moved to Connecticut. She has, they have five boys and yeah, five boys. <laughs> so, uh, but she's doing great. And Kevin and Sarah are here local. Um, Sarah is a teacher in Webster and has her um, daughter, Harper Jane. She married Mike Lee and my brother, Kevin. Um, his wife's name is Leah. They have a little girl, Lainey, and they are expecting their son on Friday. They're scheduled for a C-section on Friday. So we're another little burret to cause, <laughs> cause some trouble. <laughs> cause some mayhem. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, Burt Road, of course, is named after your grandpa. I, you know what? It's uh, not some somewhere down the road. Not not my grandpa, but that house that sits on the corner of two fifty nine and um, Burrett Road um, on the east side uh, was called the Burrett Homestead at one point. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. There is obviously a connection. Um, I'd have to go back and you know find out how that all came about. But yeah. Uh, way back in the day, I remember the High Burrett basketball tournament, and I think they did it for girls. Is that was that your grandfather? Seth's yeah, that was father? my my dad's dad, um, High and Audrey Burrett. Um, they lived on Hill Road behind us. Actually, they owned um, the land from um, Karma Center to Hill, and then back towards where um, the Icas Farm actually was. So all that behind um, Parma Center was their land. So my dad's siblings all built homes right there on Parma Center. So we were all within a, you know, mile, mile and a half radius of each other. So, yeah. yeah my, my, my parents, I think they went to school with Steve. That's your uncle. Probably Uncle Steve. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, he, Uncle Steve. yeah. And then there's Craig. I know he worked security at, yep. at Hilton too. Yeah. Okay. So there was um, Uncle Steve, my dad, and then my aunt Chris, um, and then uh, Craig and or excuse me, it went Kim and Craig. Yeah, the two younger, two younger boys. And then so. Mom Terry, she's she passed three years ago. Yeah, and she also had some siblings too. I think. Yes, she had um, uh, two sisters and a brother. Um, and um, again, her one sister lives down south. She's back and forth between Florida and Georgia. Her husband is a engineer. He was he worked in a number of hospitals. So they did some you know, moving um, between Georgia and Florida. Um, but yeah, all very close, you know, very fortunate that we had that, um, you know, with all of our aunts and uncles and cousins and lots of fun. So, yeah. Any reunions in the summertime with any side of the family? More so my dad on the, on the Sheldon side, which would have been my grandma's side of the family. And, you know, as time passes and it, those kinds of things have kind of, you know, fizzled out a little bit, but there's still mm -hmm. that attempt to keep the tradition. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, occasionally we'll see a bunch of cars in, in your uh, dad's front yard and he's got the grill out there. So yeah, it's usually, I know you guys the, do usually I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do awesome. that stuff. It's so great that we still do it. He's going to be 81 in April and, mm -hmm. um, you know, as you know, he's still, you know, he still works, mm -hmm. he's still active, you know, um, in the community. So we're very fortunate. Yeah, I yeah. run him into him at the mailbox and before I know it, a half an hour has gone by. Yeah. And, uh, and the, Carl was the like, great Where thing are you? too, 
you know, even though my parents divorced and it was not, it wasn't easy, you know, initially, but, um, they really became the best of friends, you know, and as we got older, we realized, you know, that was the best thing for them. But, um, you know, right up until the day my mom passed and even, you know, my stepmother, Kathy, that had these great friendships that we were so fortunate, um, you know, Shelly and I to have that. So, yeah. And then you incorporated, um, Kevin and, and, uh, Sarah, Sarah into it. Yeah. So you extended Yeah. We're family. all really close. Yeah. Um, going back to your early education, kindergarten through six, I assume you did it in the village of Elton? No, actually I was at Northwood. Okay. We lived on the corner of um, Parma Center and Hill Road. So at that time that was, that was Northwood. Um, yeah, I loved that school. It was, um, I had some really, you know, good teachers and I, re you know, fond memories of my music classes and, and, uh, yeah, I, it was a good experience for me. Do you, do you recall any of your early friendships there and did they materialize into middle and high school friendships? Um, most of my friends, uh, were at, at Village. I mean, some of my dearest friends that we still are very close, um, that we met in middle school and high school. Um, one of my, one of my close friends at Northwood was, um, I don't know if you remember the Duthoy family. Um, De Debbie Wasn't there Duthoy. a Tommy Duthoy? Tommy, yeah. yeah. Um, but Debbie was one of my close friends. She's, uh, her married name now is Capon. So, um, and her kids went to Hilton, you know, went to the high school and were athletes. So, um, but yeah, she was a lot of fun. You mentioned at Northwood, you remembered some of your musical. Was that mm -hmm. vocal or was it instrumental? What was it? Yeah, I was um, always into singing. Um, so I was in the chorus there. We had, um, it was Marsha Catrette at the time. And what is her name now? I can't remember. She still plays music. I think it's, is it Cher Meta? Yes. Yeah. She was great. And Mrs. Keeble. Mm -hmm. Keeble? Kebble? Mm -hmm. I remember her. Yeah. And then later, um, it was the gentleman who ended up being uh, the music teacher at the high school, and I can't remember his name. But yeah, I I always loved singing. I thought I could really sing. Um, <laughs> maybe not so much, but in my right. <laughs> in my mind, I could. <laughs> <laughs> And in the shower, right? So. And in the shower. Yeah, I think everybody can <laughs> sing in the shower. Exactly. What, was, <laughs> what were your memories of middle school? I assume it was at Merton Williams, correct? It was at Merton Williams. I would say probably, um, well, I take that back. My fifth and sixth grade years were at West Avenue. So it was okay. K through four at Northwood, fifth and sixth at West Avenue, and then seventh and eighth at Merton Williams. That was those were kind of difficult years for me because that was when my parents were going through their separation and divorce, and um, you know there were a lot of a lot of things you know going on changes. But um, I was, um, you know, I tried to stay involved in the music thing. I was still in chorus. I think at that time I was still doing Hilton Raiders, which I have a lot of fond memories of that. And you as well. Um, you know, I remember your the folks on the board. I still I have this file at work that I titled Fun Findings, and it's all stuff that I found in the office when I started, or things like my memories from Raiders and um so I kind of leaned on those things. But yeah, I, I remember those couple years being, you know difficult but i had good friends and again you know supportive family so muddled muddled through it and uh yeah that's that's kind of what i remember from middle school any any other teachers that you know, like maybe they were influential to you or anything like that or it was just friendships and yeah i would say just like friendships my aunt at the time worked in the guidance office so i spent a lot of time visiting her i remember that my mom's aunt so she would have been my great aunt um i had um mr uh colburn 
And mm -hmm. um, I was on that team. I'm trying to remember. Um, I'm trying to remember the other teachers that were on that team, but I really he, enjoyed he him. A... Um, and that's when I met like um, Michelle Camilacci and Denise Bilby and Bonnie Scopa, that group. That's when, we, you know, we started to, to develop friendships then. So, and those really have, are some of my dearest friends even now. So. Still get together and stuff like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. So then you moved to the high school. Yeah. Freshman year, 10th. What are, you, what are your remembrances of, of Hilton High School? Uh, I don't know when you met your husband, Bill. I'm yeah. not sure. Tell, me, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, I really liked the boys. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I um, that. no, yeah. So, um, I, I, I had to work really hard for my grades. You know, that was, uh, uh, again, kind of like the end of things. Um, you know, dad remarrying and now I've got a little baby sister and, um, and so that freshman year again was a little struggle, but, um, I, I had met some really great, continued some great friendships. I started um, cheering and, um, and, you know, got myself involved in a lot, in a lot of things to, to keep me busy. And I really loved, I really loved my high school years. Um, Mrs. Hackett was a huge um, influence on me, a great role model, really all the PE staff. Um, I met Bill my freshman year in high school. His father was the principal at the high school at the time, Mr. Garno. Um, and we dated all through high school. Um, so yeah, that was, the, the Garnos were very close friends with um, a lot of the teachers at the high school. So I got to meet them on a different level. The Kratz family, they were very, yeah. um, very close with them. So spent a lot of time with those families and really, um, you know, helped to guide me along with my family, you know. Yeah, I remember, I remember the Garnels very vividly as well. I was friends with Greg, he was my yeah. age, and going over there and, and playing Trivial Pursuit with the family. Yeah. And just feeling like so inferior compared to Harold They're all and so smart. Ma, they are genius. Yeah. And it was like, and then one night I think the Kratzes were over there and, 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 uh, they're, yeah, they're they really are cool all too. very smart. Like I, mm -hmm. I can, yeah, I know what you're talking about, about that intimidation well, thing. Seriously. And then of course, Harold being the principal at the time, Mr. Garneau, I should say. Right. And like you said, you see them on a different plane, you know, like yeah. it's not in the school. Wow. But it was always stuff like that. It was always, you know, game night. And, you know, I remember that. And I remember that being, you know, like that was huge for me, having that mm -hmm. structure. Um, and, yeah, they were, my, thank God our kids, I mean, they have that gene that they're, our kids are pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what was it like dating Bill in high school? I mean, like he, he was an athlete. I believe he was a wrestler. I think he was a soccer yeah. player too. Yeah. And then w was it like that relationship of athlete cheerleader type or what was it like? Well, and I don't um, mean, you know. Yeah, no, I, it was fun because I, um, you know, in at that time when you cheered in the fall, you cheered for football and soccer. So I was, you know on the sideline cheering when he was playing soccer. And then back then they had wrestling cheerleaders and all my friends cheered for basketball, but because Bill wrestled, um, you know, I was a wrestling cheerleader too. And, um, you know, that was a lot of fun. That was a great atmosphere. I mean, that wrestling has always been such a, I have a, you know, a real passion for, for watching it and following, you know, especially our program because of the success that they have. Um, but that's really where I got it from was from high school and, and cheering and, you know, knowing how to keep score and yeah. And one of my, remember during the Clayton Barner tournament, I think Greg, Bill's brother asked me to go to a tournament and we went and watched Bill and he had like a huge upset of a Spencer Boy wrestler. And I still oh, remember. It was DeAngelo. Uh, uh, it was DeAngelo, right? Or, yeah. And uh, I still remember, I think he had a 
pull out, or I don't know what they call them. I apologize, Craig Gross and Darnos. Um, but I think he stood them up, and you know, it was like pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was know, a big Bill, day I, because I do remember that. Mm -hmm. Did you keep score for the? No, you were cheering for that yeah. team, right? Okay. I didn't. I never kept score. No. Okay. Explain a little bit how cheerleading has gone from your day until present day, where it's pretty much competitive cheer. Yeah. So, well, I had the fortune of co coaching in the district for 12 years. Um, mm -hmm. I worked, w I uh, coached as the JV coach with Lynn Morgan. And then when she retired, um, I took over the varsity program. And, um, you know, that's when it was really start, not, it was really starting to become more competitive. Um, and um, I had some really talented teams. We had some, you know, great success. Um, and so it fall of 99 is when some, due to some unfortunate circumstances, I, I ended up leaving, um, and, uh, what it's five, till five years ago when the former, uh, varsity coach retired, um, I was asked to be on the committee, the hiring committee to bring on our new, var our current varsity coach. Um, who is the absolute real deal. I am so mm -hmm. happy that I was a part of that because she, Shelly Kamano is, I mean, I don't know how many sectional titles she we've won since she's, she's been on board, yeah. but um, yeah, we have some great talent. Um, so yeah, evolved beyond, I mean, it's just the gymnastics and the level of difficulty and um you know, the scoring is all based on a rubric and categories and um, it's fun. I, and it's nice to see it getting the respect that it, it really does mm -hmm. deserve. So, um, yeah, it's been fun to watch that over the years. Those girls are athletes. Um, they do you are ever go? Do you ever go to the competitions or you just catch them when they're doing their routine oh, yeah. in school? No, I, I've. I've been, you know, I, I try to go when I can. I've been to most of their sectional tournaments. Um, you know, I love the live stream now because if I can't, you know, get to that or another event, you know, it's it's great to have that option. But, no, I try to get to as much as I can for them because – and they always seem to, like, really – I mean, they have success throughout their seasons, but she just has them primed and ready for the end mm -hmm. of the season for, you know, all of the big – big tournaments. So she's, she's really great. I'm glad you brought her to it or you were one yeah. of the ones on the committee to bring yeah. her to it. Yeah, me too. Um, when you were cheer, you're coaching, I think it was for 12 years. What you had another job, I assume, right during the day and then you coach at night. Well, so I started out when I, 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 I started out, I spent two years at Casanova college. I got me a, my associates, there at that time it was a two-year college my freshman year was the first year that it was a co-ed school um unfortunately it has closed just recently mm -hmm. within the last mm -hmm. two or three years um and i went on to brockport and and um for my bachelor's degree in business with a concentration in marketing so i started out um working at um an advertising agency here to, in downtown rochester i worked in their media department and at that time, Bill was um, working at RIT as a director. Um, well, I take that back. He was in the printing industry. So we ended up moving to New Jersey for a couple of years. I've kind of blocked that two years out of my mind because it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't my most favorite time. Um, uh, so we were there for two years and he ended up coming. We, we ended up back in Rochester and I ended up back in the advertising world. And then um, we started to have, our, you know, started our family. Um, I went back to work for maybe a year or a little bit longer. And I w found out I was pregnant again with our, our second daughter. And so from that point on, I was kind of working. Um, we decided I was going to stay home and I was just doing part-time stuff, cleaning houses. I worked, um, uh, worked, excuse me, at a restaurant for a little while, and then I ended up teaching preschool. So I was working part-time um, while I was coaching and, and raising the kids. So um, 
so yeah, I was very fortunate. That was kind of like a source of income for me also, my coaching. Um, so yeah, there were times, uh, you know, in fact, when Tony Streb was playing football, you know, I won in my belly, one on the backpack, you know, running <laughs> down Favre Stadium on the sideline. And mm -hmm. those were exciting times when the kids were little, you know, babies and coaching during that time. Curious, what were some of your responsibilities in, in was it media and the advertising world? What'd you do? Like, what more specific? Yeah, so we bought, so our department um, worked on, at that time, like print ads and um, um, uh, TV ads for our, our clients. So we, um, you know, looked for those spaces in um, print magazines and newspapers and time slots for, um, you know, typically it was like news during news hours. So that was what I did in that department. So that was, that was fun too. What did you learn about yourself when you're doing all those different jobs and stuff? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I'm not a, I don't sit down a lot. I don't, right. I'm not a reader. I, mm -hmm. I really can't sit down a lot. Mm -hmm. I think I take after my father in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, so I just knew that I was going to do something to help contribute to the family because, you know, I was able to stay home with the kids. So, um, you know, I found that I put my mind to it. I could make it through the day, you know, mm -hmm. working part time, volunteering hours at the at school with the kids, um, you know, time management was a huge learning experience for me during that time. So, you said you worked at a restaurant and also taught preschool. Yeah, I taught preschool um, for seven years at the um, the Methodist Church in in mm -hmm. town, Noah's Preschool. Mm -hmm. um, actually it was more, it was a little bit longer than that, but the girls were older now they were in school all day. And then I started, um, Simon was just starting kindergarten. So that freed up my mornings. So I was able to, um, you know, do that. It was like a nine to 1130 morning, you know, with preschool. So I had a three-year-old class. Um, oh, and it was so fun. They were so cute. Mm -hmm. And they thought you were the best thing since sliced bread when you were there. But then you saw them a couple of years later. They had no idea who you were. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They move on real quickly. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Did you, and then the restaurant you worked at, or was there a couple that you worked at? Yeah, no, it was, I worked at the Apple Tree Inn um, that mm -hmm. used to be up on 104 out um, in Clarkson. And again, mm -hmm. it worked out. The kids were just old enough where the girls were in school. And then I had um, a couple of my cousins, um, actually Craig's da twin daughters, um, who were homeschooled, that they would come during those hours that I was, um, you know, working at the restaurant and um, watch the kids for me. So. No, when you were teaching, out. it <laughs> did. And I mean, did you ever consider when you were doing preschool to go back to get a teaching certificate, or that never came to your mind? No. I did. Nope. I didn't. Okay. I didn't want. Yeah. Because you're I, a mega I, I, people, it was just people enough. person. Pardon mm -hmm. me? You're a very people person oriented. I mean, I yeah. run across you a lot at the AD department, but. Yeah. Um, I like, yeah, I, lo I love people. I love watching people. I love interacting with people. And yeah, I mean, I'll talk to anybody. I mean, why not? Like, why not? It's right. just, it's fun. I know one of my colleagues, and I won't mention his or her name, I said, he, you know, I was like, well, what do you guys do on this, this particular day? And he goes, well, I go to this meeting and then I just go to Marcy's office and book her for about an hour. <laughs> so he, this, this guy looks forward to it, you know, I was like, so you have that effect. I know who people. you're talking about. And <laughs> okay. I love talking to him too. <laughs> He's hilarious. Um, now you, I'm going to press you a little bit. New Jersey. Did you not like the area or was it just a point in your life and your marriage that just literally just want to forget those two years? Yeah, no, I think it was the area, you know, people were just a little, you know, no, not a lot of pleases or thank yous. And it was just mm -hmm. a little harsh for me. Um, mm -hmm. 
so, and we had good friends, like we had some Rochester friends that lived um, near us where we, that we spent a lot of time with um, uh, this Tony played soccer with Bill at RIT. So, um, and um, they ended up out in Nyack, which was about a half hour from us. So we spent a lot of time with them. So we had fun. I mean, we spent a lot of time in the city and that kind of thing. It just, I miss, I miss my family. You know, it's just mm-hmm. a different pace, um, mm-hmm. more demanding. And uh, so I, I struggled with that. You come from this little village of Hilton. So then you're yeah. in your New Jersey and you said you went to the city quite often. Yeah. And you yeah, like that? Just, you know, like... just travel into the city. You know, we had a lot of friends mm-hmm. come visit us. So that was the mm-hmm. thing to do. We'd, you know, take them into the city and, um, um, so that was fun. I mean, we were close to a lot of different places and, you know, we, we made the most of it. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but it just wasn't for me. Now I, I pulled out the yearbook because when you were a senior, I was a freshman scared to death of a high school. And there was your, probably your most fun year of high school. Yeah. And, uh, they put these, you write these things up and then one, two, three, four, one represents freshman, two, three, four being senior. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if you remember this uh, mouse and moose. What was that relation to mouse? Uh, 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 that was mouse was my nickname. Okay. And yeah. And who's, who's moose? And that was, that was probably just another nickname okay. that somebody Thump, said thumper. once and I thought it was cool to put in the yearbook. <laughs> okay. So then it's thumper, Marcy, fartsy, fartsy. No, it was, those were just all like nicknames, I guess. Boy, the things okay. we did back then, right? Super good times, JV cheerleading one and two, captain two, which I assume is your sophomore year, correct? Yeah. Varsity cheerleading three or captain four. I'd like our audience also to know junior year, you were homecoming queen, or maybe that was freshman year. It was my freshman year. That's right. Will Will Prince and I. <laughs> you want to talk about the, the, the junior prom? What, you were on the junior again? prom court. You were on yeah. the junior prom court. BS's buddy. One, two, three, four. Bonnie is that Bonnie Scopel? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I know this is 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 hell on you right now, but I'm going to go through it. I'm almost <laughs> done. I don't have either four. All in a mouse's night for oh. ad- adventures one through eleven. Yeah. Wow, Bonnie, one, two, three, four. Closet driving with DB, KG, and BS. I think I know those. Yeah. <laughs> initials. Um, Fweddy's admirer, three, forever. And then your afterlife. College, get married, and have little mice, and ha- live happily ever after in a house by the ocean. <laughs> oh, God. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. <laughs> A little little trip down memory lane there, Marcy. Yeah. I didn't think you were going to get away. Um, so as you as we move on into your college years, you, you went to Casanova, and then Bill went to RIT. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and what field of study did he do? He was actually. Um, it was back when printing existed. <laughs> he was mm-hmm. newspaper production management is what he was. So he, he had Ron Hein March in high school. And like most people, you know, that had Ron, you know, came, became very interested in the, the world of printing. So that's kind of the, the direction that he went. Um, what year did you get married? We were married in 1988. We just celebrated our 35 year anniversary in December. Congratulations. Crazy. Thanks. And then, and then, and then your children, when did they start coming along? Tell us a little bit about them, their names and what they're up yeah. to. Yeah. So our firstborn Bailey, um, she was born in 92. Um, she's now 30 years old. She lives in Los Angeles. Um, and she, um, works in the music industry. So uh, all three of our kids, um, you know, we're so proud of all three of them. Uh, Bailey graduated from Syracuse. 
um, and ended up out in LA. Um, she studied radio, television, and film. You thought she wanted to go in. She dabbled a little bit of in acting um, when she was younger and um, initially thought that that's what she wanted to do. Um, and, uh, you know, she graduated from Syracuse, came home for a month, worked and ended up, you know, knowing that she was going to head back out to L.A. Um, and went there with no job, you know, no place to live. And you know, it's a big Syracuse networking um, there in in LA. So she ended up, you know, staying with some friends until she found a job and um, and she's doing great. Um, Ellie, our, our middle child, middle dog, well, middle child, um, also a Syracuse grad, um, brilliant, like her, both, all three kids are, but Ellie's, you know, they were all, the girls were all four season, both four season athletes and involved in, you know, choir, chorus and band and environmental club and, you know, all that good stuff. At least in Syracuse, she just got married in December um, and she teaches. Um, she's a reading teacher, reading specialist in the um, Syracuse City School District. She teaches at Nottingham. And then our youngest, Simon, um, he also just got married. He was married in July. He's here in, um, he and his wife live in West Arundaquoit. He married a Hilton girl, Rachel Siciliano. Um, and she is a teacher, um, excuse me, she's a counselor um, and in the Spenceport School District. So, nice. yeah. So I recently had a child go off to college. What was it like and if you could give advice to people that are that first kid that goes off to college, what was that like for you and Bill? And how did you manage that, the emotions yeah. and, and whatnot? You know, I just would say, first of all, it comes so quickly, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're like, how are we here? Just like now, I'm. how do we have two kids that are married and, um, and a 30-year-old? Um, mm -hmm. It was hard. It was hard because as a stay-at-home mom, you know, who just, who was there for them all the time, um, you know, it was, it was an adjustment. And especially because the girls were very, the kids were very close, the girls especially. So, um, but she was, she was so happy and so excited. And that's what you really have, have to focus on. You know, you've done all you, you know, given them all the tools that, you can and um just hope that they make their you know good decisions and you know you've done your job so but yeah it is tough it is hard when the girls were they at syracuse did you did you visit quite a bit there i mean that's not too bad too, not too far yeah away. yeah not too much i mean you know you we would do little visits here and there and they would come home on breaks and stuff like that but they loved it um ellie had her own radio station there um at, at on their um you know the campus the university mm -hmm. radio station she had her own show um so they got they were involved in stuff that kept them busy so and of course that you know that at a school like that you know there's just so much excitement going going on ellie was a tutor for um a lot of the athletes um wow yeah so she football had football team or Basketball team, um, lacrosse? Uh, basketball, lacrosse, and um, primarily basketball and lacrosse. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. You got to know the player, you know. It was fun. Now, Ellie, you said she had a show. Was this like playing music or was yeah, it an interview it type of format? Yeah, the girls especially kind of, you know, they found our, our love for music. Um, and so, yeah, she had, um, a show, an hour long show. It was called fool. Her show was called fool on the hill, which is a Beatles tune. Um, okay. so yeah, we had fun listening, listening to her play her music. And then, uh, Simon, I we, we, he, he was a pretty good athlete too, right? He played yeah, soccer and stuff yeah, like that. Simon, he was actually just inducted into the hall of fame, which was, mm -hmm. was it, really exciting. He was soccer. Uh, he played um, soccer and basketball 
played basketball up until his sophomore year. Um, and he played soccer modified through varsity, but, um, yeah, he, he, you know, how we eat, live and breathe soccer here in right. the Arnold household. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, he had a really, his senior year, they, it was you know, that successful season when they won the sectional title and regionals and went on to States. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and as you know, with, you know, both your kids, mm -hmm. that, is such a great memory. I mean, like we it sure is. You will never forget that. It was such an exciting time. Um, and he had a very successful career at RIT, also at the collegiate level. So, um, yeah, that induction was really special. We we're really proud of him. So he played for Dad at RIT. Yep. Yep. Yeah. How was that? You know, they managed. You know, right. they 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 managed, and you know, Bill has a great staff there and they helped manage that so that was it was a good experience it it you know it was hard for me you mm -hmm. know i kind of separated myself from sure the parents not you know it's just as the the wife of the coach and a mother of one of the players you know you just um but it was exciting and is that what Bill's still doing today? Is he just primarily the soccer coach? Does that take yes. up all his time? So his, that position, when he was, even when he was working, um, he was a director. He ended up coming back after we moved back to Rochester. He ended up working at RIT as a director of a print lab there. And at that time he was coaching. He was hired as the, uh, the head coach at RIT, but it was a part-time position. And I can't remember when it went full time, but um, he took that opportunity to to coach full time, and um, uh, yeah, and he's still there. So when I you... think they're going to have to kick him out in order <laughs> for him to give it up. <laughs> um. With Bailey, you said she's out in L.A. Have you, have you visited her a few times? And when do oh, yeah. you go to visit? What what do you guys do? Um. Well, usually when we go to visit, it's relax. Supposed to be relaxing time for us. Mm -hmm. Um. She'll usually have you know a few things planned for us. Um. You know, museums or stuff like beach. You know, uh, you know, we got to go to the beach, but um. The places that she's stayed at, there's always been a pool, you know, all of her apartments that she's been in. Um, and usually we see some live music while we're there also. There you go. She, we actually went last summer. She got us tickets to go see um, Bob Dylan um, in downtown L.A. And then we visited the Troubadour, which is a, a was a really big spot for a lot of up and coming artists right in Hollywood. And that was cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I also, it also was mentioned you had two weddings pretty much within a calendar year, right? <sighs> yeah. That must've been uh, interesting to schedule all of that and plan all that, huh? No one. Yeah. I was losing my mind. It was a lot. I mean, yeah. Six months apart. But yeah, Bill really enjoyed me during that that time frame because <laughs> I was so calm. <laughs> but it, it was they were great. Kids. Everything was beautiful, and they're you know we're so happy for both of them. Their spouses are wonderful people, and yeah. Are you some? You some? I'm going to call them a little deeper questions. Uh, what do you consider your biggest challenge? Maybe one that you overcome or one that you're working on? Um, I worry a lot. Like, it's hard for me to shut my mind off. Um, and I, it's not, I, you know, like, I get worried about I work. So I get so stressed at work. It's a lot. It's mm -hmm. a lot of responsibility in that office. Um, so that part of my brain is constantly, oh my God, I forgot this. I got to remember this tomorrow or, um, you know, and then of course you never stop worrying about your kids, regardless of how, um, 
old, you know, how old they are or how successful or independent and, you know, confident there's just, you just, you know, as a mom, you, you worry. Um, I would say that's probably, you know, I just shutting the mind off is a tough thing for me. We kind of glossed over your, your day-to-day work. You're in the athletic department. You're the administrative assistant. Tell us a little bit about that uh, responsibility. Yeah. I mean, you figure how many teams. I just put together a list. You know, we have, in the fall season alone, you know, we have probably 700 athletes, you know. And then I think we figured there's like 75 plus coaches, you know, Mm -hmm. throughout the year. Um, And then the number of teams, you know, you figured modified through varsity and now we have multiple modified level teams. Um, It's a lot of responsibility, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, not only are you, you know, maintaining records and, you know, update, you know, reports and day-to-day officials and transportation. And, you know, I do a lot of, um, with our business office, like all of the purchasing and invoicing. And, um, so it's, it's a lot of responsibility and I, and I, um, I enjoy it. It's the perfect spot for me. It really is. I mean, I went back to work at 47 full time. I can't believe that I'd landed that job. I mean, I was, you know, coloring and cutting things out at preschool. Mm-hmm. And here I am now, you know, having to learn all of these systems. And, um, you know, I was very thankful for Mike Drutzi, you know, the athletic director who hired me, that he gave me that opportunity because I, I, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a great fit for me. So I'm capable of doing all that stuff. Sometimes I get a little stressed, you know, and, and people like to visit, <laughs> you know, and so, <laughs> right, right. You know, and I, again, I, then there's a part of me that it so enjoys, you know, talking with people. And, um, so it's just, you got to, manage it and prioritize and you got to learn that some things can wait till the next day. You know, Mike used to say, well, it's not like we're losing anybody on the operating table. And, you know, <laughs> it's stuff like that, that you have to, right. you know, your primary thing is, you know, are our teams getting to where they need to be, you know, are our officials showing up, you know, that kind of stuff is really the day-to-day important things. Well, so. from my interactions with you, you make it look very seamless. Whenever I have a question, you're usually able to respond back in five minutes. You make it look easy, Marcy. Wow, thanks. If I don't um, respond back in five minutes, then I've lost you. I'll, you, it, I, you it, know, it, I. You'll have. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was one time in the 20 years I've been working, and most, most of them with you, that you didn't get back to me on an email. And it was like, that's pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I know, like, from transportation requests. Coaches trying to get a hold of the AD, parents coming in and out, calling. Um, I, you didn't even mention like new athletes to the programs that aren't familiar with recertification. It's just right. oh, it's a lot, lot going on, yeah. but you do make it look easy. Um, I, I tell you, it's the kids that I love. You know, mm-hmm. I just, I love, especially when they are senior, you know, as they get older and they know who you are and they just pop in to say hi. Um, we had a, uh, a, a cheerleader last year who um, uh, ended up at Clemson. She's our first cheerleader to go like to a big D one school and she made the team and she was actually at um, the uh, elite uh, eight. What, yeah. She was at the, I forget what round it was, maybe the yeah. sweet 16 round. And mm-hmm. she, you know, she sent me a picture of her at the game and it was just really, you know, it's that kind of stuff that you're like, you know, it just, it keeps you, you're level headed there when you're ready what's, to lose your mind. What's her last name? Gizzy, correct? Yeah. Sophia. Okay. Yeah. Sophia Gizzy. That yeah. is cool. Um, who do you think is the most influential person in your life? If you could narrow it to one. You know what? I got, I, I got to say my husband, I mean, Mm -hmm. really, he just, 
I have to say that. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> no, he really, he really is. He really is. He's just a good human. And, um, yeah, he's, you know, we've, we've done a good job together raising our kids and he was, you know, a part of my life when things weren't easy for me. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a testament you dated all the way through high school and you're basically childhood sweethearts, right? Yeah. It's a good yeah. story. <laughs> it's a great story. Do you remember when he proposed to you or you want to keep that off air? I don't care. Um, is he romantic? I guess is what I mean. Oh God, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it was Chris, it was Christmas Eve when he would propose, but I, what I most remember is like when he asked me to go out with him or whatever, it was like mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day or something. He gave me a green carnation. Like I remember that more than I do our, his wedding, you know, his marriage proposal. Mm -hmm. That sounds silly, but I do remember that. <laughs> All right. Here's a, here's a weird one. Who are three people or maybe just one person from history that you'd like to have dinner with? That I would like to have dinner with. Pick their brain. History? Yeah. Could be familial, maybe someone you didn't meet in your family history. Could be someone from history. Oh, you know, probably I um probably my mom's dad would be one because he passed away when she was a child. Mm -hmm. And um my mother was the kindest, just had such a good heart and um and she always talked about him i mean he passed when she was 10 years old but she adored him so i think that would be one person that i would want um you know would want to uh to meet or have dinner with um so i would also say my sister shelly um has had um she's again the kindest we are so very much alike but so mm -hmm. different in a lot of respects also um but she's had some health struggles um she's doing fabulous um and uh she has a form of cancer which she's doing very well called multiple myeloma and um through some connections she ended up um with a staff of doctors who also are Tom Brokaw, the news anchor, his mm -hmm. staff of doctors, um, he has multiple myeloma. So okay. um, she ended up with this, like the best of the best, um, um, these doctors. Um, and I think that would he would be another because I would just want to, you know, thank him for everything that he has done um, for our family. Um I can't. That is a, that's a tough one. I would, I would have. Sorry. You got two. Tell yeah, me a little bit two. about more. And because I agree, because I know, I know you and I knew Shelly, of course, and I know Shelly. Um, I didn't know your mom very much, but tell us a little bit more about your mom. You said she's one of the sweetest, kindest people. And obviously that, that is transpired down to you and, and Shelly. Yeah. She, um, she just loved Shelly or our Shelly and I were her world. I mean, she had a difficult upbringing. She had some struggles as a child. I mean, her father had committed suicide. So that, mm -hmm. I, you know, um, had a, a impact on her. Um, so life wasn't always easy for her. Um, but, you know, like I said, her and my father became so close and such great friends and, um, you know, she was there during those Raiders years and, mm -hmm. you know, she was putting the notes in the mailbox or excuse me, in the lunch boxes and, um, you know, did what as best as she could, you know, after my parents had separated and divorced and, um, you know, finally took some time to do some things for herself, which, you know, was good. Uh, yeah, she, she gave Shelly and I that you know, dad, obviously social, I got my 
that's right. a gift from my father. Right. And, um, you know, that I think that kind and caring piece from my mom. Yeah, it so. sounds like a great role model for you and your sister. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would people be surprised to learn about you that we, you haven't told me already? I like, <laughs> well, not so much now because of where we are and having to downsize, but I've been known to do some dumpster diving <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I love to like re, you know, refinish things and I love to decorate. And um, I always joke that it, I watch all these DIYers, I follow them on Instagram. And in my mind, I think I could build a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, but um, I think that would be it. Like, I, yeah, I just, I like, like I said, not so much now because of what, you know, the amount of space that we have. But, we end up in a house again someday, a small house when the kids start having kids. Yeah, I, I might dive in a few more dumpsters and see what I can conjure up and repaint and, you know, embellish what? a little bit. You can't <laughs> let the dumpster dive go without one more question on that. Okay. <laughs> what was, what, one was wondering one of your most prized uh, possessions that you grabbed from a dumpster side of the road. Okay. So I, when we lived on Buttonwood, um, someone was throwing out an old, uh, <laughs> it was like a fish tank table. Like, and so I, Marlene Pickett and I mm -hmm. schlepped this thing back to my house and I, you know, sanded it down and I added some legs to it and all of these like pretty things. <laughs> And painted it, and it's what I used as our um, our console table that our TV went on. And yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that I that I did. I even when we were moving, like we literally had all of these garage sales, and I was selling stuff on you know Facebook Marketplace, and literally driving my car to our new apartment full of stuff. And somebody had these two little side tables out at the end of their driveway. And I was like, I got I to gotta stop and get those. And I did. <laughs> well, as it goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. There you go. In your case, one true. woman's trash is another woman's treasure. Yeah. Um, how do you balance your professional life with personal interests and relationships? Because uh... this is... I think this is good advice for people because you're a busy woman at work. It's a 12 month out of the year. Yeah. Job. Well, you know, I guess I look at it differently because I was so fortunate to be home, you know, with my kids and available to them. And this, this is like, this was my time, you know, to, for me. Um, yeah, I don't do a lot during the week. You know, summertime, I try to make the most of the summertime and nights, especially down here, um, you know, where we are, it's so busy. But, um, I, you know, my weekends are for me. And I try to, I've learned to not say yes to everything. You know what I mean? Um, it's okay to say no. When you're, you know, you've worked a long day, a long week, and Maybe you just want to order a fish fry in on a Friday night and that's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's great advice. Learning how to say no and yeah, not always be at everyone's beck and call. Because right. You do a right. great job Monday through Friday. I got to say. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, what's something you wish you had known 10 years ago? Wow. Hmm. Uh, well, um, we've started paying our parent plus loans back. So I wish I would have known <laughs> that's a lot. Um, right. so, you know, like I, not that we would have done anything differently, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't change a mm -hmm. thing, but maybe, maybe planned a little bit better. <laughs> I get. I can agree too. I'm four yeah. years younger, but I can agree. 
I can yeah, you don't, you know, you, you're just living it and you want it for them and you just, you're going to do whatever you can to make it happen. And, mm -hmm. um, but again, wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing. When I was doing some research, I did notice that Doug Lemke, was he in your grade? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you bring a little bit about his life to our audience and explain yeah. uh, what he went so, through? Doug was a wrestler, um, and um, he was he um, he was a, a really again like kind of in a smaller group of you know he was like the O'Shea's and and a group that wasn't really great like great people but just not you know is is social you know in the mm -hmm. in the circle of friends that i hung out with but he was just like this really great guy that you always um you know wanted to talk to and and um actually bill and i attended his um the last time i saw him before he really started getting sick was at our our 10 year class reunion and um his wife uh, he married an O'Shea, Jeannie mm -hmm. O'Shea, and, mm -hmm. you know, just a great woman. And they were just both so strong and just faced th like the worst possible, you know, set of circumstances and their boys were great. And Bill and I attended his service and it was beautiful. Um, and he planned, he planned the whole thing, you know, the music, every, he, he had, I think we got a CD and, you know, he had the songs that he was playing for his boys. And we had, um, we had, a, a, um, we shared the same music, like likes. And um, I just remember being so, I mean, it was very emotional, but just, was beautiful, you know, and that's how he was. He was just a deep thinker. And, um, yeah, that's what I remember about Doug. He, he so sad. Lou Gehrig yeah. disease, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, as we start to wrap it up here, Marcy Garno, you got anything on your bucket list? Uh, more traveling. You know, Bill's first job it took him all over the place. He was in, you know, Germany and and um, he went to South Africa. He was actually there during World Cup. He's been he was had the opportunity to travel a lot when he was working in the printing industry. Um, mm -hmm. So I, that's, you know, I, I'd love to go to Ireland. We've been to Scotland, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that that's just traveling. Traveling. Yeah. Now uh, we do these. I do these podcasts because I want to bring out Hilton and Hilton people. Uh, according to you, what do you think is, is special about Hilton that maybe, um, I know you don't live in Hilton right now, but you work in Hilton, but you and your husband and your family is very successful due to the rooting of Hilton. What, what makes it special? Um, you know, I, it's obviously changed a lot, um, but there still is that um, that close knit community, and I think you know I still see that because I grew up in Hilton, and I I know the families you know that still are in the area. Um, you know there are there's just good hearted people, and just that you know the little village that cares, right? Isn't that mm -hmm. what it is? It is. Yeah. Yeah. It, okay. So comes to the point and you're retired five years into retirement. What do you want people to remember you by from your workings at Hilton? Um, I, I, th I think just, you know, like just trying to be a good person, you know, my, and, and, and again, just, loving to meet people and talk with people and um, maybe my sense of humor. Um, yeah. Helpful. Yeah, I would well, say that would be. Well, you're not retired yet, but I mean, one of the things I can say is I think people stop by and bug you. You're trying to do your job is because 
you are so fun to talk with and you got a great laugh that came through on this podcast. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been really nice getting to know you. I learned a few new, new things and I really wish you good luck in, you know, how many years you got left. Thank you. Yeah. I, I've got those parent plus loans, Mike. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> uh, you and me both, you and me both. <laughs> Well, listen, you say hi to Bill. You enjoy um, your dog and get to some music. And I'll be seeing you around the high school. Saying okay. Hi real, Thanks so real much, soon. Mike. I, I really right. enjoyed this. All right. Me too. Good night. All right. Take care.